presence of God is already here. The power of God is already here. And we're going to dive right into the Word of God this morning. It is a privilege and a joy to get to do this with you. I was just overwhelmed a moment ago, just myself in the worship, thinking about the faithfulness of God as I looked at my daughter standing next to her, her, her friend M, worshiping together and watching how God has knit the lives of our actual natural family into this family and into this spiritual family. This is home away from home for us. And so if you're like, are you new around here? No, I'm old time around here. This is our family when we're not on the other side of the ocean. And it's just a joy that I get this entrustment and an honor to speak into the house of God. We had an amazing time with the women. Where are all my ribs at? Yes, you heard me right. I said ribs, and if you weren't here, you have no idea what that means, but we had a great time. Team were amazing, and God moved powerfully, but I love that I get to be with you this morning. I have a word to build the house today, to build this house, this community, and so I want you to lean all in. It will be challenging today. I'm just giving a disclaimer up front. Don't leave the room when it gets awkward. Just stay in the room. Let God unpack it for you, and I promise you, you will leave with something that you did not come with today. So let me take you to a moment in time. Cast your minds to what it must have been like when there was a boat filled with some young men. Young men that had built a business, young men that had a community, young men that had family and friends and were just doing life like they always did life. But on this particular day, something happened Someone walked by their boat and said two words. The two words were simply, follow me. I don't know what happened in their hearts at the sound of those two words, but clearly it was something that was going to change their destiny forever. For at the sound of the two words that Jesus uttered of follow me, they left everything they knew and began a journey to somewhere they did not know anything about. Jesus didn't tell them where they were going, what they were going to be doing. He just simply gave them the option to leave what is familiar and follow me on a journey that will change the rest of your life. And that day, those fishermen changed their life by becoming disciples. The root word disciple actually means at its essence to become a student. That day they said, I don't think we know all that there is to know, but I think he has answers we do not have. That day they said, I think that there's something about him that's going to teach us more about us. That day they changed their posture to get into the seat of the learner. And from that day forward, every single day of their lives, they were a student of Jesus. They watched him. They listened to him. They were corrected by him and challenged by him. They were taught by him and disciplined by him. Jesus was their teacher and they were his willing students. When Jesus comes by the boat of our life, whether that happened years ago for you or just a few moments or weeks ago, there was something about Jesus that caused us all to step out of our usual and say yes to following him as a disciple. But I have seen so often that we come so far on the journey with Jesus. We follow him for a season, but it's like we then get to a place where we have a conversation that goes something like this. Hey, Jesus, that's great that I got to follow you. But if you don't mind, I'd like to go back to my business, back to my boat, back to the way I do things. And if you don't mind from here on out, I'd like you to follow me. I'd like you to follow my choices, bless all my decisions. I'd like you to follow my priorities. I'd like you to fit where I need you to fit. And I think we forgot that once we left the boat and said yes, that was a life 
time choice. It was a decision that should change every other decision. And today I wanna get you out of your boat wherever you've drifted back. And I want to get you back into the work of being a disciple, back onto the journey that you and I are called to for your best life is a life that follows after him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with a passion that you cannot dilute. You and I are called to be seekers of Jesus. I don't know whether or not we've used that word in the church in a way that's made us think we're not seekers anymore. We talked maybe in the church a lot about people coming in that are seeking to find Jesus, but I want to redeem the word back to you and say, no, even if you don't know Jesus, if you do know Jesus, you're still a seeker. Both are seeking. One is seeking to find him for the first time, but we are seeking every day to find him find new aspects of him and new levels of him and new depths of him, seeking to find him in this word and seeking to find him as our way. We are seekers. But maybe we've become so filled with information that we've stopped seeking revelation. So many opinions, we've stopped seeking the truth. We're so immersed in our culture, we've stopped seeking the kingdom. Our excess in life has caused us to seek him less. And today I want you to get back to seeking because James 4 verse 8 tells us that if you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. Something happens when you start seeking him and pursuing him. Something happens when you follow after him with all your heart and the enemy does not want you seeking. You need to wise up, church, because he knows. He knows there's verses in this book like Proverbs 8, verse 17, that tells you, oh, by the way, if you seek him, you will find him. If you seek him, you will find him. So the enemy knows if you start seeking, you're going to get an answer. If you start seeking the Prince of Peace, you'll find peace. If you start seeking the healer, you'll find healing. If you start seeking the provider, you'll find a provider. So the enemy does not want you seeking. He wants you hiding. What's the first thing that happened when sin entered the Garden of Eden? We went from Adam and Eve seeking to walk with God in the cool of the day. Seeking to be in fellowship with their creator. Seeking to be around the things of God. And as sin enters into the Garden of Eden, the first thing they do is they start to hide. Hide from the one who moments before they were seeking. They start to hide from him. Hide behind their shame. Hide behind their mistake. Hide behind their regret. The enemy wants you hiding. Hiding behind your schedule or your busyness or your money or your shame or your failure or your own priorities. He doesn't care what it is as long as he can stop you seeking. But I'm here to remind you, you are not a hider. You are a seeker and you've got to get back to the job of seeking for in your seeking, you're going to discover some things that you think are not there, but they are there. You just forgot to seek. I remember when our kids were younger, they loved the game hide and seek. It's a great game. If you're a parent in here, I highly recommend hide and seek. What is there not to love? Number one, the kids hide. Number two, they're quiet whilst they hide. And number three, it's free. It's a no-brainer. It's a great game. So we played it all the time when our kids were growing up and our son was much better at hiding than his sister, Hope. And so Noah and Hope went to hide and I was seeking. I was seeking a little while and found Hope pretty quickly. And so I find Hope. Well, after finding Hope from where she was hidden, my phone rings and I take the phone call. It's a friend. She's having a bad day. In fact, she's in a bit of a crisis. And so now we're talking about the situation and I'm trying to counsel her and she's crying and I'm comforting her. And and the phone call ends. and, And as I put the phone down, the laundry begins to sing to let me know that the load is done. So I go to the laundry. I'm taking the wet clothes out. And then the dryer has clothes in. So I'm folding the dry clothes, putting the wet clothes in. 40 minutes later, I suddenly remember, wait a minute, I'm playing hide and seek. And I only found one child. There's still a child in this house. 
that thinks I am looking for them. So I get back to the job of seeking and because I have taken so long, I find Noah has climbed underneath his bunk beds and he is fast asleep. And as I was thinking about this message, I felt the Holy Spirit remind me of that picture. And tell me to tell you today, it's not that there isn't a miracle in the house. It's not that your dream is dead. It's not that that marriage will never get better. It's not that that sickness won't go away, but you stopped seeking something inside you. Just stop seeking. And if you get back to seeking, you would find there are things that start awakening, start coming back into your life and your journey that God has for you. So today I want to help you by sharing with you the story of a man whose life was completely transformed because he decided to seek. He went from being hidden to being found, from being confused to being clear, from being isolated to being included, from being a fraud to being a follower. His name is Zacchaeus and his story is found in Luke 19. If you've been around church for any length of time, you will be familiar with the story. You probably even sang the song and made the little cutout of the man and the tree. But could we just look again at the story? Because there's a little bit more to it than a cute song and a cardboard cutout of a tree. There's a truth in here that can help set you free today because this man made some choices that if you and I will also make, we will find ourselves like Zacchaeus with a life that is transformed forever. Luke 19 tells us the story. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Will you please note that phrase? Jesus is passing through this place. He's not stopping here. We're not doing a crusade here. He's not planning to have a teaching session here. Jesus is simply passing through. But in that place, there was a man there by the name of Zacchaeus. And he was a chief tax collector and he was wealthy. I love the Bible gives us the extra background information. It's letting you know this man had everything the world tells you to seek. And if you seek this, you'll be fulfilled. If you seek influence, you'll be fulfilled. If you get the top job and the money, you'll be fulfilled. Well, he had the top job and he had influence and he had money and he's still empty. So we find Zacchaeus and it says that this man Zacchaeus, he decided that he wanted to see who Jesus was. I want to ask you church, do you want to see who Jesus is? I mean, do you really, really want to see who Jesus is? Because I just don't know. I just don't know when I look at the church sometimes, I'm like, I think you more want to see your sports team play at the weekend. I think you more want to see your favorite artist in concert. I think you more want to see how many likes you got on Facebook or Instagram. That seems to be what you really want to see. And I'm challenging us all today, church, because if you wanna be a seeker, the first thing you've gotta do is get back your passion of seeking to see I'm not satisfied until I see him with my own eyes. It was like Zacchaeus knew Jesus was passing through. And he's like, I'm not staying here if he's gonna be passing through over there. There was something in Zacchaeus that got curious. I think we've lost our curiosity. Like I, I, I don't want to sit and just applaud your stories about how Jesus healed you. I wanna see him heal me. I don't just wanna amen your testimony about how Jesus opened your barren womb. I wanna see him do that in me. I wanna see Jesus in my life, in my family, in my marriage, in my finances. But if you wanna see him, you're gonna to have to make some decisions, just like Zacchaeus, which means you're gonna to have to move. Hello. You're gonna to have to get off your blessed assurance and move. (laughs) And Zacchaeus realizes, man, I want to see. I don't think he wanted to listen to other people's stories about what this guy was like. He wanted to see how tall is he? 
What's his shoe game like? How does he interact with the crowd? He wants to see with his own eyes. And so he starts to get up. See, you've got to start to get up. You've got to start to get curious. You've got to start to say, I really, I want to open this book and see things. I, I want to see things about him that I've never seen before. You've got to get curious. But so many of us have got comfortable. Got comfortable just living with the perspective that we've had for years. The problem is your proximity alters your perspective. And some of you got proximity to your pain, but you want to see healing, but you won't move. Got proximity to your past, but you want to see your future, but you won't move. Well, I need to let you know there is a future to see and there is freedom to see, but you're going to have to do something. (laughs) So Zacchaeus decides, I want to see Jesus. When he decides that, the next thing happens, which is his excuse shows up. When you get ready to see and seek to see, your excuse will show up. Why? Because the enemy does not want you to get up and seek to see because he knows when you seek, you will find. So every excuse will show up. Well, I want to seek breakthrough, but I'm embarrassed. Well, I want to seek freedom, but I don't want to tell anyone about my addiction. Well, I want to seek community, but I'm an introvert. Your excuse will show up. So he decides he wants to see Jesus and then here comes the excuse, but he was short. And all the short people said, come on short people, this is your moment. The Bible understands all of our issues. If you are short, you are covered in the word of God. He's like, I'm short, I have short people issues. But then it says Zacchaeus decided, you know what? I'm not gonna let my excuse get in the way. I know there's a crowd. I know I'm short. I know this is hard to see when you're short. But the Bible says he ran ahead of the crowd and he began to climb a tree. I wanna say to whoever needs to hear this today, unless you're willing to climb a tree, you're not gonna see anything different. You say, what tree? I don't know what your tree is. Some of you gotta climb the tree of your pride. (laughs) Can I say in the most loving, love you way. For some of you today, you just need to get over yourself. Just get over yourself. Like, like, like get over whatever it is that I'm just too cool or I'm just too together or I'm just on the fence or I'm just whatever. Listen, it's not working. What you're doing is not working because there's something you need to see. But unless you're willing to climb the tree over your pride or over whatever it is that goes on up here, you're not gonna be able to see the thing that you desperately need to see. And Jesus is passing through and our pride gets in the way and our ego gets in the way and our can't be bothered attitude gets in the way. And I'm just letting you know, if he's passing through, don't you think you should start to move? So Zacchaeus climbs a tree. Why do you need to climb a tree? Because then the next thing can happen. It says, all of a sudden, Jesus reached the spot. What spot? I just told you Jesus is passing through. So there is no spot. There's no place we're stopping today. What spot? The spot where Jesus knows someone is trying to see me. I know there's people everywhere, but someone is seeking to see me today. Jesus knew. I don't think Jesus had security with earpieces in. Okay, Jesus. Jesus, third tree on the right, third tree on the right. Wealthy man is up the tree. We need an offering. Let's get him down the tree. Let's get an offering, and then we can carry on carrying on. I don't think that was what was happening. Jesus just knows. He's like, I know who just came to fill a seat today. And I know who came to climb a tree. I know who's here just to tick a box. And I know he's here because they've got to see. They've got to see me as their hope. They've got to see a way forward. They've got to see a deliverance. They've got, I know, I know which tree I need to stop under. And Jesus stops under the tree and says the most amazing thing. He opens his mouth and he says, Zacchaeus! Wait a minute. He knows my name? Jesus is calling him. 
by name. Why does it matter that Jesus used his name? Because the name Zacchaeus means pure and innocent one. This man is anything but pure and innocent. He is lying and cheating to his whole whole community. He is double taxing, triple taxing people and putting it in his own pocket. He is cheating and lying from everyone that thought they could trust him. He is not pure and he is not innocent, but Jesus is letting him know, I see you and I see who you really are. You're not that. You're gonna figure out by the more you seek to see me, the more you're gonna see who you really are. I want to help today those that have allowed all kinds of things to label you. You're not the label of the, of the failures you have. You're not the label of the person that spoke words over you. You're not the label that your mother or your father put on you that kept you down or made you feel less than. You're who he says you are, but you're never going to know who you really are until you seek to see the one who made you. And as he seeks to see Jesus, Jesus lets him know, I see you. Today, some of you need to be seen. You need to be seen by the one who can let you know exactly who you are and whose you are. Zacchaeus up the tree, seeking to see. But Jesus is like, there's another step. And I just want to give a disclaimer You're not gonna like some of you this next step, but I have to say it anyway, because it's in the Bible. Blame the Bible. Jesus is like, I'm glad you're seeking to see me, but Zacchaeus, there's another instruction I have to give you. Zacchaeus, I need you to come down immediately, because today I must stay at your house. You can't just seek to see, you also have to seek to stay. And all the runners in the room got really uncomfortable right about now because you don't want to stay. You don't want to stay in the marriage. You don't want to stay in the relationship. You don't want to stay when the conversation turns to something that's awkward. You don't want to stay in the environment where you feel a little bit like vulnerable. You don't want to stay. You run. And I'm just here to let you know it's tiring and it's weary. And man, some of you are exhausted because you won't stay. But if you just stay and get past the awkward, you'd step into the fruitful and the blessed and the flourishing, and that's what God wants for your life, if you just stay. (laughs) Some of you come every week. Some of you come once a month. And the pastors get up here because they wanna help you. And they say, hey, we have these blue cards. And we have people in blue t-shirts. And we have a connection booth so that you can connect with people. And you're like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. And you take your little blue card and you put it in your little pocket and you walk right out of the meeting. You're like, I ain't handing that sucker in. You avoid eye contact with blue t-shirt people because you're like, they may ask me a question and that may lead to them knowing my name. And I don't want you knowing my name because I don't stay. I drop in. Don't you know I date Jesus? I date him on Sundays. Put my act together like I got my life together. Come in, endure an hour and 30 minutes. I date Jesus and then I go back to my life. And then when I need another date, I'll show back up. Jesus don't want to date you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to take it to the next level where he can help you and sit at a table with you. He's saying to Zacchaeus, I'm glad you're in the treetop, but son, it's much better at the tabletop. It's much better when you can look in my eyes and I can look in yours and we can have a conversation. And I know everything inside you is gonna wanna run, but if you'll just stay, the running will die down and the planting will begin and things will start to grow and flourish in your life like you can't even imagine. I'm telling you, they're not trying to get your email. The church are not trying to get you on a database. They're trying to help you stay. 
Pastor says, next week we're talking about tithing. You're like, I'm washing my socks. You're like, I don't want to be listening to anybody tell me what to do with my money. Can I just let you know that the Bible teaches us about tithing, not because God needs your money. God don't need your money. But you need to do something with your finances that makes it stay. When you put your finances in the soil of the kingdom, that's different than paying your car payment or paying your TV uh, rental or paying for some kind of electricity bill or some kind of membership to a gym. That's not staying. That's stuff that will be here today and gone tomorrow. When you tithe, God's saying, let me show you what happens when you put your money and stay committed in something beyond you. It helps people in other nations. It helps go on missions. It helps raise a generation. It does something for you and your household. This is biblical principles, but we get so awkward when people talk about commitment. When we, when we put two words together, like small and group, we're like, ooh, those two words should not be in the same sentence. I don't wanna be in a group that is small. No, thank you. I get it. Listen, I have been with my husband 31 years. There's a difference from dating to be married. When you're dating, is Prince Charming. When you get married, you realize some days he's more like Shrek. It's just one of those things that happen when you stay. I had children and they were amazing and so cute and so lovely. And then they got about four and I'm like, you can leave now. But I didn't have the option because I'd made a commitment so I had to stay. Immaturity won't stay. Selfishness won't stay. Pride won't stay. Ambition won't stay. But when you understand that Jesus himself wants you to stay, you understand all the stuff you're spending your hours and time and energy chasing. If you just stay, you'll find it. I'm not too embarrassed to tell you I still play hide and seek. I'm 50 and I still play hide and seek. There, I said it. Sometimes us and our kids, we've got friends of 38 years and their kids are in their 20s. Sometimes we'll be like, hey, let's all play hide and seek. So we do. On this one occasion, I was hiding. It was our friend's house and I knew exactly where to hide. The cupboard with all the junk in it that she thinks no one knows she has. So I go up to that cupboard. I don't just hide. I mean, I get in the cupboard and I put stuff on top of myself, ski boots, jackets, backpacks. Like I'm like buried. Like I'm like doing a good job, right? So my friend's like looking, she's seeking and she opens the cupboard doors and she looks in there, not once, not twice, four times she opened those doors and I was in there the whole time. And if she just stayed for a few moments longer, she would have seen things moving in the cupboard that should not move by themselves. She would have heard, because uh, 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 I was dying under all that stuff. But her impatience told her, it's not here, so I'm moving on. Impatience will rob you of the very thing you're looking for. Impatience will tell you to leave the room when if you just stayed, the miracle was in the room. Impatience will walk you past the connections booth because you're so busy looking for friends when friends were right there if you'd stopped at the connection booth. I'm telling you, there's something about a generation right now and there's something about the church right now that all over again needs to learn to stay. We went to Rome recently with our kids and when we were in Rome I was struck by it felt like on every corner of every street there was tape and the tape was letting you know someone has discovered something underneath the soil that we think is valuable there's some kind of artifact there's some kind of thing down there that we've discovered so don't walk over here because we're excavating but I was struck by across the road from pretty much every place where they were excavating there was a tourist shop and I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, that's the problem. On this journey through life, we have an option. We have a choice. We can either start digging for the treasure or we can just pick up a trinket. When you are going through a rough season, when you're going through a hard time, I'm glad you have a fridge magnet. 
that tells you that he is your peace in the storm. I'm so glad you have a trinket, but can I tell you, your trinket is not gonna help you hold on in that storm. You have to have not just a fridge magnet, you have to have a revelation on the inside of you. You have to know that I know that I know in the storm, he is my anchor. I have to know that I know that I know that he is my deliverer. I'm glad you have a Christian podcast that you quote, but that's a trinket. Until it's your revelation, it's not your own treasure. And you can't build a marriage, a family, a business, a life on trinkets. But no one wants to dig anymore. Some of you are like, ooh, how do you see all of that in the story of Zacchaeus? I'll tell you how. I've been down here digging for months. Digging. I'm sure there's more here, God. I'm sure there's something else to see. I'm sure Zacchaeus' story is in there for a reason. I'm sure he's trying to teach us something. I'm sure he's trying to speak to us. I'm sure he's in heaven going, I'm not just the guy in the tree. But we don't stay. Stay. You'll be amazed what you find. And if we seek to see, and we seek to stay, then the final thing will happen that happened for Zacchaeus. And it's probably my favorite part of this story because this didn't come because Jesus told him to. This didn't come because the disciples pressured him to. This came from inside Zacchaeus all by himself because in verse eight, it says Zacchaeus stood up and he said to the Lord, hey, look Lord, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. What's going on? The real Zacchaeus is standing up. The more he's around Jesus, the more the real him is being awakened. And the more he stays at the table, the more he realizes I am not a liar and I am not a cheat and I am not a man that lacks integrity. There's a different guy inside of me. I just wasn't aware that he could stand. And I wanna say, maybe you've been coming here for a while. And honestly, the chair where you sat almost has your exact imprint in it from where you sit every week. And as good as that is, I wanna challenge some of you. Your challenge today is you gotta seek to stand. Something in you that's called to lead. You're like, me, moi, yes, you. You know how I know that? Because I am a full-blown introvert. Some of you are like, no, you are not. Yes, I am. The last thing I ever thought I would do is stand up here in front of a crowd full of people and be speaking to you as if I'm so very confident. This is not confidence in myself. This is confidence in the assignment that's on my life. And the introvert part of me, the introvert part of me, the more I would stay and the more I would linger, the more I would see and the more I would understand, the more something inside of me wanted to get up. And I read scriptures like, well, if you don't speak, the rocks will cry out. And I'm like, I ain't gonna be outdone by a rock. And all of a sudden something in me began to stand. And I read verses like it's better to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. And I'm like, I'm not even serving. I wanna know what it is to say what David said. I wanna know what it is to feel what he felt. So I realized something in me needs to stand. I read about Jesus who said, I didn't come to be served, I came to serve. I'm like, Jesus came to serve and I'm just sat watching. And something in me began to stand. And I believe in this room there are new kids workers and there are new small group leaders and there are kingdom builders and there are people that are gonna financially help bless the kingdom. And there are those in here that are gonna build small groups and gonna speak out in the workplace. I'm telling you, inside of you, there's something that wants to stand because God put it there. We need in our world for the church to stand again, for believers to stand again, for us to be leading in our communities and our workplaces, not in our own arrogance or pride, but in the Spirit of God that wants to stand up on the inside. When you seek to see, He's gonna challenge you to seek to stay. And when you seek to stay, something inside you is gonna seek to stand. So all across the house today, I don't know where this finds you, but I know I'm on assignment from God 
to speak into this house a season of new seeking. I'm praying that all over the house today, from every service, in every location, that there will be a hunger and a passion that will be reignited in your heart, not just to show up, but to seek, to seek to see what you've never seen before. Have you seen Him as the miracle worker? Have you seen Him as a deliverer? Have you seen Him as a provider? Because if you seek Him, you'll find Him. I pray there's a whole new level of staying in the house today. I pray that, I, in fact, I don't just pray, I dare you. I double dare you to go to the Connect team. Oh, what might happen? Who knows? I dare you to fill in a blue card. Ooh, come on. I mean, if we can't take that step, then really? We're like, yeah, I wanna change the world for Jesus, but I can't make a connection with people that love Jesus challenging you today. This word is a doing word. It's not a sit on my butt and think about it word. It's a what am I going to do about it word. Challenging myself. What else is there for me to see? Challenging myself. How much more can I plant? How much more can I stay? Challenging myself. How much more can I stand? How much more can I serve? Here I am, Lord, send me. So all across the house today, I want us to stand to our feet. You might say, well, that was a little challenging. <laughs> I don't think it's a time for us to be apathetic in a world that is going to hell. I think it's a time for the church to be on fire with a fresh passion and a fresh fervency. I think it's a time for us to seek Him like never before because if we seek Him, we'll find Him. So all across the house today, I want you to close your eyes. I wanna pray over you. I don't know where this finds you. I don't know what the challenge is and what the next step there is, but I know there's a next step. And today I'm praying that you'll feel the presence of God and the empowering of God for you to have the boldness to make whatever step that is. So God, I thank you for every person right now in every location. I thank you, God, that you are stirring them and that you are calling them. God, I thank you that there are destinies and there are callings that are dormant. And God, you're blowing into that today. You're putting your fire behind it today. God, I pray there be a, a surge of people that say, I don't just wanna come, I wanna seek to see. And God, I wanna seek to stay. And God, I want to seek to stand. Oh God, I pray this will be a season. 21 years have just been celebrated. God, I pray these next years ahead would be marked by a church that is fully on fire, a church that is fully seeking you, a church that will not settle until they get everything they are supposed to get from the hand of God. Lord, do a work in the leaders. Do a work in the staff. Do a work in the worship team. Oh God, that they would seek you until they find you that they would seek you for new songs, that they would seek you for new revelation. They would seek you for miracles and they would seek you for breakthrough. Oh God, that they would seek you for leaders to lead in areas like never before. I pray God that you would bring miracle after miracle as your people seek you. And all across the house, as eyes are closed. I wanna read the last part of this story. For after Zacchaeus stood, Jesus said these words, today salvation has come to this house. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The very nature of God Himself is that He is a seeker. He can't help Himself. Every time we gather, He's looking for where is Zacchaeus in the room? Where is the one that is lost? Where is the one that has run away from home? Where is the one that is living a life that they think no one knows about? He sees you. And right now in the room, I'm just asking for you to be bold today because I know Zacchaeus is in the room. I know there's someone that is on the run. I know there's someone that is searching for forgiveness. I know there's someone that is tired of the life that they're living. I know there's someone that is prodigal and need to come home. You're gonna have to climb a tree. You're gonna have to say, that is me. And today, if that is you, I'm just simply asking you as a church, I've got their eyes closed and I'm praying. If you're saying, I need a fresh start today, that is me. I want you to lift your hand. That's you climbing a tree. As you're saying, that's me today. Come on, hands all across the room. 
might say, I feel uncomfortable. Exactly. So did Zacchaeus climbing a tree. It's not about you being comfortable. It's about you getting the answer you need today. And I tell you, as you climb that tree and you lift your hand, just like you did with Zacchaeus, he'll stop under the tree of your life right now. And he sees you and he's calling you by name. And he is not judging you. And he is not reprimanding you. He's calling you chosen. He's calling you son. He's calling you daughter. He's calling you forgiven. He's calling you set right and cleansed by his blood. He is reaching out to you. He sees you today. So God, for every brave hand that is raised, for every life that is saying in this moment, I need you, God. God, I thank you right now. You are the forgiver of their sins. You are the way maker. You are the burden lifter. That today is a day of transformation. Today is a day of salvation. Today, as Zacchaeus is in the room, say, God, I'm seeking to see you, God. I thank you. You are calling out of them that has always been in them. You're wiping off the wrong labels and you are speaking the truth over them right now. And God, I pray, just like Zacchaeus, today they would choose to come out of the treetop and come to the tabletop and begin a journey with you that will change the rest of their life. God, I thank you for every single one that is responding in this moment. Thank you that you're welcoming them home and a new beginning happens today because they decided to seek to see you. We give you all the glory, God, and all the thanks. And we thank you, God, that you are the one that seeks and saves every single one of us. We give you all the thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.